Number three is to find your fit. And what I mean by fit is figuring out how you can get your intention to actually communicate or do something that's worthwhile in the world. So let's say you want to start up an, an ice cream parlor. And you say, I really want to sell ice cream. I want to sell vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, hazelnut, blah, 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 blah. And you're all excited about ice cream. Okay, that's, that's not quite enough though, right? You know your intention, that's good. But then how are you going to sell it? Are you going to go to the corner over there and rent a shop and then hire a bunch of people and figure out the minimum wage part of it and then get ice cream coming in? Or are you going to develop an app that will deliver ice cream by drone and that's how you're going to get it to people? Or will it be a little ice cream truck outside or will it be one of those push things that you, that you see in the park? You know, or will you make ice cream manufactured overseas or somewhere here in America and you ship ice creams to 7-Eleven? Like, what are you going to do? Me, I'd probably make an ice cream app. I'm not great at app development, but I know how to do it. And that's what I do. And you might do something different and you might do something different. That's where the fit comes in. You're not going to know your fit until you start to share your idea. And it might be as simple as you going back to your dorm, going back to your apartment or whatever, and getting the ingredients, what is it, eggs, milk, whatever, whatever goes into ice cream, getting those ingredients, coming up with one bar, and then handing it out to people for free and saying, what do you think? Again, this goes back to starting somewhere. That doesn't mean you start renting out the place at the corner. It doesn't mean you buy a truck. It means you start small. There's a great book that I'd recommend called Little Bets. It's by a guy named Peter Sims. And it really gets into this idea. And what he talks about is <clears throat> the major companies that we see today, whether it's um, um, Facebook, which was, you guys probably saw the social network, you know, it was, it was creating in, in a dorm room, just like the ones down, down the hall. You know, just someone scribbling on a window and a bunch of roommates talking. That's how Facebook started. You know, I won't even get into how much they're working on. Apple, it was the two Steves. It was Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. In one of their, one of their garages, they literally soldered, like, you know, soldering with the flame. They literally soldered the first Apple. Got it to work, took it to the local computer clubs. People dug it. They're like, great, give me $600 for it. It's like, great, thank you. And they used that money to make the process smoother. And they're still doing that. Think about that. They're still doing the exact same process 40 something years later. Those are called little bets. That means you don't jump into the deep end. That's something I talk about in uh, my first book, The Bite Size Entrepreneur, 21 Ways to Ignite Your Passion and Pursue Your Side Hustle. And then the follow up I just did, The Productive Entrepreneur, 24 uh, Smart Secrets to Do More in Less Time. That's what I talk about in both of those books is that we get intimidated by thinking we have to map out and do the whole thing when we don't. And in fact, the companies and the entrepreneurs and the people that we look up to start extremely small. They don't put everything on the line. If you look to a lot of smalls now where they're saying, oh yeah, you have to crush it and you have to put everything in and put all this money into it, blah, blah. No, no, no. The people that we look up to now, that's not how they started. That's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be little bets. One of the things I always tell people that I, that I mentor and that I consult with is that it's better when you actually have this as a side hustle. And a side hustle is something that you do literally on the side. If that doesn't go well, you're not gonna go bankrupt. You're not gonna miss your rent or whatever. This is a side hustle. Why side hustles are created is not only to make more money, ideally, but to also experiment and to see what your fit is. What makes the most sense? And if you're putting all the pressure of saying, I'm gonna put all my money into this and it has to work, there's a certain way that you might actually stunt the growth of whatever is naturally supposed to happen. So for instance